Hello, berries, and welcome to a looping tutorial guide, sort of. Like, I'm sorry if I sound so skeptical. I ha I've had uh, a lot of people asking me to make like a tutorial for survivors, but to be honest, the learning curve to become a very good survivor is pretty damn high. And... Like, everybody knows that the most difficult thing about being a survivor is how to loop. How to loop correctly, how to loop efficiently, how to do it for a long time, and, and so on. Of course, there's more than just uh, looping when it comes to being a survivor. Like, uh, flashlight saving, destroying hooks, uh, doing generators, healing, unhooking people correctly. All of that comes to the correct decision making and that comes to experience and knowing what to do should I heal should I do a gen should I save my teammate when and how you know all of that comes with time but when it comes to looping you'll be able to learn it much faster if you follow a few basic guidelines notice that I say guidelines not rules okay there are 22 killers in this game they're all very, very different, but for the most part, you want to follow five simple guidelines in order to truly become a fairly decent survivor in a chase. We all want to be able to hold our own in a chase for at least, you know, not, not to fall instantly before the killer. So, with these five basic guidelines... Guidelines that a lot of people, even in red ranks, don't follow. So, I'm here to show you people what is very important in a chase. Now, a lot of adept players, especially survivors, take these ideas for granted. And that way it was so difficult for me to try to explain these concepts. Because they're implemented into my gameplay. But I w as I was looking at myself, and as I was looking at randoms in red ranks, I figured that they don't even have like the basic looping ideas. Now, Eden for the sake of this match took Wraith, and I'm t I took Jake with no perks. The only reason I took a medkit is in, in case in Eden injures me, I can uh, become a fully healed survivor to keep uh, explaining to you guys how everything works. So this is Fractured Cowshed, a bright map. You guys can see clearly what I'm doing. In a traditional loop, there's a pallet and there's a window. Sometimes there's the LNT... LNTs that it's only two windows, sometimes there's loop with just one window, sometimes there's loops with only a pallet. But I chose Fractured Cowshed because on this map there is plenty of loops that resemble other maps. Like for example this loop you'll see it on Suffocation Pit, you'll see this maybe even on the uh, Yamaoka maps, and so on. So, when it comes to looping, there are a few guidelines, specifically five, at least that's how I see them. Now these guidelines are to look look backwards when you're looping a killer. Now imagine there's a, uh, a killer behind me. Eden, where are you? So I don't know. Oh shit, the Wraith has found me. There he is. So the basic uh, idea of when a killer is chasing you, look back. Look back to see how close the killer is to you. And then look forward to see how close you are to a window or to a pallet. Always look back and forth, back and forth. You gotta look that you're not bringing the killer... Yeah, you see? See? Now you know. Now you know where he's at, and you know how close he is. Right? You see how, how simple it is? If you address yourself correctly to the situation, you need to look forward to see if you're going to a pallet or to a window, or if you go to your teammates. To not lead the killer to them. And you gotta look back to see what the killer is doing. It's a basic concept, but I see so many red ranks not following this basic idea. They either all or completely look forward, not even knowing how close the killer is to them, or if he's aiming a hatchet, or if he's about to chainsaw you. And sometimes survivors don't look forward, and they just end up running into a wall or something. So, be very dynamic with your mouse movement. 
know the different type of vaults. That is rule number two. When it comes to a pallet, there's two types of vaults. There's the slow vault that doesn't cause any noise, and there's the fast vault. This fast, it, you, you choose when to do either of these two vaults. Even when Freddy or Clown slow you down, whether with the snares or with the bottles, you still vault at this speed. When it comes to windows, you've got the slow vault, you've got the running vault, and you've got the bad, inefficient vault that your ass sticks out. This shit. Never do this shit. A lot of people uh, do this type of vault, and then they get smacked right in their behind. Their hitbox is humongous, and it lingers in the back. So... You want to strive to go for this type of vault, and not this type of vault. You need like a two, two step run. You see, one, two, and then you can vault like that. When you run towards the window, don't do it like, like this, because you'll always vault in an inefficient way. You want to come at the window at a direct angle. So instead of running like this, run like this and into the window vault. And try to to squeeze in only two steps, just a little bit. You saw that? Like, see? Going wide, one, two, bam, and you're in. So that's correct window vaulting. That is very, very important. Notice that if you are slowed down by Freddy snares or by Clown's bottles, even if you vault in a direct fashion, you, can, you will vault like this instead. So try not to get slowed down by those two killers, for example, to perform a correct and efficient vault. If a killer hits you, Eden, come out and hit me. After me, like a 115% killer. Okay? J just a regular killer, okay? So let's say he hits me, yeah? Follow up on me regularly. L look how long. Look how long, man. Just by me holding W. Finally. Finally he caught up to me. You see all that distance I got? I ran the entire map. That's extra 30 seconds that your team is doing, or 20 seconds, I don't know how much, that your team is doing, gents. Utilize this boost of speed. Don't utilize the speed to 360. Don't utilize the speed to run backwards or, I don't know, to vault a window or drop a pallet. Because when you vault a window or drop a pallet, you lose the boost of speed from the hit. Utilize the boost of speed to run forward and make distance. Like, for example, if Eden would have nailed this hit on me at the pallet, don't drop the pallet. Keep running, you got the boost of speed. Only when your boost of speed ends, do you begin to loop. Avoid going to high places. Like the harvester, hills. These type of places are usually bad unless if you have balanced landing. Eden, try to hit me. So look. I get a stagger, Eden doesn't get a stagger since he's the killer and he nails a hit. Do not go for these places under any circumstance in the, in the duration of a chase unless if you have balanced landing. I see a lot of people get the boost of speed and climb a hill or like for example they take the hit on the hill so when they land they lose the boost of speed. Don't do any of that. Don't get on high places, don't jump from the harvester, don't jump from the, the hill when the killer is after you. You're gonna get a, a stagger and he will not. And another basic concept that uh, a lot of uh, red ranks fail to uphold is when you loop, let's say, let's say the Eden's after me, okay, and this pallet is dropped for the heck of it. Stand here. Here, for example, you can see the killer from this direction and you can see him coming from this direction. Or, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's say you're standing here. So you can see him coming from that side, and you can see him coming from this side. That This way you can have a good view. If he comes from there, you go here. If he, if he comes from there, you go here. If he comes from there, you can vault. Always stay on one side. I see a lot of people, when they get to a loop, they, they tend to camp the pallet. They stay at the pallet. And you pay the ultimate price for it. Because what usually happens when you camp the pallet is that the killer nails a hit and you also waste the pallet. Never do that. Okay. So let's say let's say you're on the other side of this wall, yeah? Like a wraith does. I have no idea where you are. 
I it, this is what happens when you camp a palace. And then you end up dropping it, maybe even on the wrong side, and you're fucked. Never do that, okay? You don't have visual contact with the Wraith, and even if you do, he might be able to uh, launch faster and attack you faster than you can recover from it. What you want to do, instead of camping the pallet, which is a, a terrible idea, stand here, for example. Stand here, you can see the killer coming from there, you can see him coming from here, and loop efficiently. Right? Or stand here, not at the pallet, but maybe close to it, yeah? You can see him coming from this direction, and you can see, and you got a pretty long mileage from here, right? If he's coming from here. Just go towards the window. If he's coming from this side, then you can uh, get in here and drop the pallet if he's close. And if he's far, then you can vault the window again. What I say is, try to find a decent corner where you have visual contact with, uh, with the killer. Not a position where you're camping the pallet because you, it's, it's easier for the killer to attack than for you to defend yourself. You have to adjust yourself to his timing. Never do that. So, that's about it. Those are uh, the cornerstones, the guidelines that you should follow when looping a killer. I know this is not really accurate, I know the game is very din dynamic, there's 22 killers in the game, even more than that if I'm not mistaken, and each and every one of them works differently. So, you might act a little bit different in depending on the situation, but for the most part, these are the guidelines that every survivor should follow in every game when they're dealing against an experienced killer. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.